we're getting really deep dive with this question, but I think it's important because people here probably, how many of you, raise your hand if you hear inverted yield curve thrown around anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that, why it matters. And, and, and if you could explain to the audience what it actually is and, and what do you, how much importance do you put on that? Well, that's, that's a good question. I think, you know, I, um, when I was a grad student at Clemson, I had a lot of Clemson football players in my class. I don't know what you think about Clemson football, um, but I had to, I had to work hard to keep it practical, uh, keep them awake. I, the question about yield curve, I'm thinking, okay, how would I explain that to Clemson football player? So normally, investors want to be compensated for taking on more duration risk, meaning if you're going to tie up your money for 30 years. 10 years, you need to be compensated for that risk of having your money tied up than if you're putting it in, a, in a, an instrument that has shorter duration, meaning you know, it's like a CD, right? Right. Um, an inverted yield curve means that that relationship's not holding, meaning you're not compensated more for tying up your money longer than shorter. Uh, what does that mean practically? It, it influences... I think at the core where we all sit on Main Street, it influences access to capital uh, from lending institutions. So you own a business, uh, you want to buy a house and borrow, uh, whatever it is when you're accessing, wanting to access capital, an inverted yield curve, meaning it's, it's not in its normal upward sloping relationship, it's going to restrict access to capital. That by definition is going to restrict the growth of an economy. And that's why I guess it is considered kind of a harbinger exactly. of a recession. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we hear all the time that consumer spending makes up almost 70% of GDP. And right now, as you've already kind of alluded to, we're still spending money. The consumers are still spending money. And, you know, I think about it from a, I'm not an economist, so from a layman's perspective, what causes a consumer to stop spending money? I feel like it's one of two things. You lose your job, or you can't borrow any more money. So let's talk about credit card debt and let's talk about the unemployment rate, okay? The unemployment rate's still at a 50 year low. Do you see pressures on the labor market right now? It's such a regional question. Mm. Um, and, it, and I think, you know, it's a, it's a challenge. So I, before I moved back to the Southeast, so I grew up in the Southeast. I was born in New York. I referenced my grandmother, Buffalo. But I grew up in Greenville, South Carolina, spent most of my career in Charlotte. I had a, um, you know, wayward wandering. You know, it's my, uh, you know, the prodigal son kind of thing. I went to California. I quickly got right, moved back to Southeast. <laughs> when, I, when I moved as, with my family in 2021 from Silicon Valley to Charlotte, my inflation rate was probably a negative 1,000, right? <laughs> You multiply that a couple million times, <laughs> you're getting what's happening in the U.S., mm. meaning people have moved from higher cost of living areas to lower cost of living areas. They got bonused. Yep. I was paying six grand a month for housing. I tripled my house and I'm paying a third of that, right? Moving from a higher cost to lower cost. So I think the, the, dine, the practical application of that is the spending can happen because a lot of people's living expenses actually went down, mm -hmm. which does not make any sense if you listen to just mainstream media on the impact of inflation. Inflation hits different people in different ways. I think that's kind of the key driver on what's happening. Again, post pandemic, it's like a post-World War II economy. There's a lot of things going on. People certainly are feeling the effects uh, but some people aren't feeling the effects as much as, you know, as others. And so you're, you're right. I think labor markets are key. You lose your job. Yes. You're going to pull back your interest in, you know, upgrading your vehicle or, uh, doing a vacation. Labor markets are key access to capital, the cost of capital. So you can't pull out money from equity as easily as you could, right? Your, your home equity, HELOC loans, right? Home equity loans. Cost of 
putting that money on a card and carrying a balance, that's certainly going to hurt. Yeah. So yes, labor markets are key. Interest rates are key in order to kind of look at, okay, what's what's around the corner, anticipating that that curve in the road ahead.